talking with you guys. Um, I, I can see that um, we're going to have to get him a lollipop or something because he is definitely pissed off. But I'm not going to say that he's got to be an all-pro defensive line. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. I am, of course, on the road here um, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, <laughs> uh, doing some work here, but rebuilding a bathroom, and I hope everybody's going to have a great Saturday. So before I get to work here, I want to have a few words here on our Dallas Cowboys because the news never, ever quits. My question here is, now, we heard Jerry Jones basically being asked about the talk of all in. That doesn't mean that, you know, sometimes you end up answering questions without really answering a question. And this is one of those ones that I don't know if this really is that the Cowboys are going all in. The thing is, is in the past, we have been in cap hell. We've been in cap hell. And this goes back to the Tony Romer eras where we would be 30, 32, 35 million dollars over the cap. And having to make moves just to get under the cap. Now, the Cowboys do. I mean, we are because of the um, influx of cash. It's a major windfall. The salary cap has not jumped up $31 million before. And the cap, when you think of 2021, was at $182 million. And now it is at $255.4 million. There is a whole lot more cap space and a lot more money to spend. And of course, when you have more money to spend, most people will spend more money. So contracts will go ahead and balloon up knowing that there's more money out there. Teams will go ahead and reach and say, I've got extra cash. So we're going to go ahead and reset the market on this position. And this is why it behooves you to get DAC, CD, as well as Micah Parsons' deal done. Now, because two years from now, the salary cap's going to be well over $300 million. Well over. It's easy to see that. And everybody's numbers will go up sequentially. I want you to just think back to, I want to say, 2016, I think um, Drew Brees was the highest paid quarterback, about $18 million. Jimmy G was actually the highest paid quarterback at like 23, not that long ago. Um, you think about Kirk Cousins' groundbreaking $28 million per year deal. $28 million per year deal that was fully guaranteed. That's half of the going right now. It's half, okay? It wasn't that long ago. It was like six years ago. So think about it. Don't think about 60 million if that's what it ends up being or 58 million or 57. Don't think about that in today's dollars. Look going forward because there is space there. The Cowboys now have an opening in there to be able to do anything they want to if they deem it. And they don't even have to really damn the future to do it. The Dak Prescott deal alone will give you, if you go ahead and get him a new contract and kick the money down the road because you know you're going to be able to take care of that later. And we've seen teams that have had to cut a quarterback. Carson Wentz, how many times has that guy been cut and taken massive dead money hits? Seattle got rid of Russell Wilson, took a big dead money hit, and ended up being in the playoffs the last two years. So it's not that that can't be done down the road. The thing you have to understand here is, is by, by not paying Dak, you are cutting off your nose to spite your face. You could end up being, you know, as Jerry always says, you know, if it were just about writing a check, we could write a check and, to, and win the Super Bowl. You can write a check this year. You can write a check and you have the money there to do it. You're only $9 million over the cap. You can restructure D-Law or Zach Martin or, or Diggs to get that money. You could technically go through 
and just kick Dak's money down the road more and just take, you know, the, the dead money hit of the 59 and the 36 later on and not extend them. But that'll only give you about 20 million. If you want another 20 million, if you want to say, we can go out there and get some studs. I'm not talking about over the hill. I'm t- I am, you know, don't make any mistake. I'm not trying to sully um, Bobby Wagner. Okay? I'm not trying to sell Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner has been an incredible linebacker his whole career. He has been. Still had, I think, 160 tackles last year. But is Bobby Wagner the same guy he was four years ago, three years ago, or maybe two years ago when we could have signed him really actually cheap? No. Is the improvement over what we have? Yes. But I'm not at the point of just saying... I want an improvement. I want lights out. The thing that Cowboys can't do, that they keep doing, is constantly looking for bargains. Constantly looking for a way that they can get a player cheap. Okay? And this is throughout everything that they do. They sign name players because they get you excited, but always after their prime. Because you recognize Don Terry Poe and Clinton Haha Dix and Emerson Griffin and uh, Gerald McCoy. Those are some of the big free agent names that the Cowboys have signed. And you know how much they did for our team? Clinton Haha Dix didn't even make it out of training camp. Gerald McCoy got injured before the season started. Don Terry Poe was cut during the season. And Emerson Griffin, I believe, got sent back to Minnesota. It literally was, you got nothing out of all those free agents. Still had to pay them, but got nothing. And the Cowboys have to stop putting good money after injured players. We keep signing guys when they're injured thinking we can get a better deal on the contract. It'll be discounted. We did that with Michael Gallup. And I will say, Michael Gallup, and if you look at Michael Gallup and Terrence Williams' numbers, they're completely comparable to each other. They're the same numbers, identical. And you wouldn't look and say, Terrence Williams was a guy that we should assign to a big extension, would you? Especially if he had been injured and then signed one. And that was a waste of, so far, $26 million of cap space. I hope... Terrence Steele comes back 100%. But you look at that same situation and it's kind of like he wasn't really the same guy he was the year before. And you franchise tag Tony Pollard coming off a broken leg. Stop signing guys big contracts after injuries. Get me somebody who's going to be ready to start training camp healthy. Don't give us they'll be ready by the season. They can get on the field, but they ain't really 100%. And if you're not 100% to start the season, you're not getting 100% by the end of the season. Stop doing that. Stop second round trying to find a reason why you can pick up a first round talented guy in the second round because they've got off the field issues like smoking weed and not passing the test at the combine or that they've got off the field issues and things where they want to be a rapper instead of actually playing football or guys that have been injured like Jalen Smith. And you think that we're going to get a first round guy here instead of just making a reasonable, decent pick. You want to talk about the Cowboys not winning Super Bowls? There's your reasons right there. There's your reasons. Because if you end up, instead of paying Michael Gallup $13 million, end up holding on to Amari Cooper, maybe you're better in the wide receiver role. Maybe instead of taking chances on a guy who's injured, you actually get a guy who is a consistent starter for you. And stop believing in when we lose players, we're okay with everything we have in-house when you don't have linebackers. 
There you go. And don't go out in free agency and end up getting has-beens, never ones, or guys that are at the end of their line. Or no names. You can't do that. Now, you have the opportunity for the first time. For the first time. You can create more cap space by signing a deal with Dak and CD. You'll get more cap money. You can go through. You can get, and I would say, suggest, get Micah Parsons' deal done. I know I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when all the cowboy slander was pointed at Dak Prescott. Now it's all pointed at, at Micah Parsons. That's a new target for him. That's a whole new territory to go after, and they're going after him hard and heavy. He has literally become the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, which is always the most hated. But the Cowboys, and we'll find out soon. We'll find out real soon because we are in the last week of February. We are almost a week into franchise tags being over with. And we have the combine that starts on Monday. And Monday is when teams get together looking at the prospects and really start talking to each other and start working out trades and things. The Cowboys, if they want to, can get Micah signed, get uh, Dak signed and extended and get CD signed and still have about $60 million to work with. And if they don't, if they don't, then it's not about winning. I don't know what it's about, but it's definitely not about winning. They have the means to be able to do whatever they want. They have the opportunity to build a super team if they want. Question is, will they do it? I don't know, but like I said, I'm old enough to remember when um, the slander was all about Dak Prescott, and it's kind of crazy at the moment that with Dak Prescott on the precipice of getting a new contract done, um, that Dak Prescott slander, remember last year, it was all Dak Prescott interceptions, turnovers, overpaid, Cowboys should move on, and so on. Now it's Micah Parsons is the target. Kind of crazy. Listen in. Magnificent television or content. If you haven't seen it, trust me, you want to see all of it. Here's a piece of it. This is Micah Parsons talking about accountability. What people are failing to realize, and this is where accountability, culture, leadership all takes place is, there has to be a point in time when Dak does throw a pick in a crucial moment, same way Pat did. Okay. And I got to say, yo, Four, don't stress it. I got you. We're going to get a stop right here. What, 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 did, we, what did we think of that? He, he went on there to say something about how people think it's all about Dak when the reality is the defense has to be accountable as well. We, that's the, that's the next oh. part of that sentence, and mm -hmm. my, to which my reaction would be, yes, we all know that. Yes. You allowed 48 <laughs> points in a playoff Captain game. Captain Obvious, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what part of that <laughs> he, he we does, didn't already yeah, know. Look, it, it all makes sense. Look, I mean, look, accountability, it sounds good. Yeah, in, in the end, at the end of the day, look, the NFL good. is a production league. It's, about sh it's a show-me league. It's about going out on the field and getting it done. Sitting here talking about it on Stephen A's podcast or Stephen A's show, your podcast, any podcast, on get it doesn't really matter. And that's that's the part where now this is starting to fall on deaf ears because mm -hmm. it's just talk. It's just it's just conversation fodder. That's all it is. And see, that's what see, this is what Emmett Smith was alluding to. Like he's tired of hearing all this kind of stuff. He's tired of hearing about all the we should have, we could have, we we know what culture is, we know what leadership is. It's about demonstrated performance. So, so demonstrate it on the field. Just do that. Yes. Michael Parsons is going to get probably paid more than Nick Bosa, right? That's safe to say. But with that comes other responsibilities. It's not just his responsibility to be a great player. He has to also develop as a great leader. And he hasn't demonstrated that because if you just listen to his words and what he's doing becoming a distraction for the team in the offseason, that's not what leaders do. So he needs to understand that he's got to have tough conversations <laughs> with, with teammates, but he all, it starts with itself and his actions. And it's not a good look. You know, what, you know what part? Well, let me play the second part of it, though, just to amplify that point. I mean, it, it's, it's one thing to be asked a question and answer it. 
It's another thing to essentially willingly engage in an episode of First Take mm -hmm. with the number one sports debater, the person who basically invented the medium in Stephen A. Smith. Watch this exchange that took place. Besides Patrick Mahomes, Bye. what other quarterback in the AFC has accomplished anything to get more credit than Dak? Joe Farrell. Josh Allen. Did he finish? No. But they got it further. That it, doesn't, got it doesn't matter how far you get. It's, if you're going home and you're not in tearing the ring, it doesn't matter. What have they done? They've done more than that. Josh Allen almost made it to the NFL uh, Super Bowl. He made it to an AFC championship. It doesn't he matter. He couldn't, be, he couldn't beat the number one guy. It doesn't Joe, matter. Joe he couldn't beat the number one Joe guy. He him. couldn't beat the number one guy. Joe Burrow beat the number one and guy. And then he lost to Stafford. And then he lost to Stafford. He lost to Stafford. He's trying to get Stephen A. C. in <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's, it's like that's 10 o'clock in the morning on ESPN, right? That's what that is. That's 10 a.m. on yeah. ESPN. And there is a magnificent place for that. People love it. But why is Micah Parsons engaging in it? They, I don't understand. The, I do think there's a generational thing. We're all, we're kids now. He's a kid. He's 24 years old. Kids now think I have an opinion. I got to say it. And they but want I to think, debate Stephen A. And they want to debate Stephen A. But I think there is a leadership void in Dallas. Because Thank leaders you. aren't about, it being the best leader isn't about being the, the biggest talker or who says the most. Leadership comes with, hey, this is my production on the field. These are my years of experience. This is what I've seen mm -hmm. over a course of a career and, and the work I put in. Here's the thing, when I, you feel Roquan Smith. I'm not comparing talent, right? You feel Roquan Smith. Like you feel the physicality, you feel the energy, you feel TJ Watt when he's on the field. Micah talks about, I don't understand how guys can say they're tired. I don't understand. Micah is a phenomenal player, but his play, his energy, his effort, it's not translating to the rest of the defense. It's not filtering out. If Micah just, just tone it down, said less and allow, because here's the thing, to Lewis's point earlier, these Cowboys, when, when Mike McCarthy is talking about we have a championship culture, from what decade, bro? Yeah. Like, these guys it's, haven't done anything. It's, look, th this whole thing, like, this culture, what's leadership? How do you take it to a championship? Look, look the, the best leaders that I was ever around, not only were great players in the biggest moments, but they made you mm. want to be better and go, I can't fall that far behind this guy. Because this guy is not only our best player, he's our best worker. He's the standard setter. Mm -hmm. And they usually went about it in a way that wasn't debating Stephen A. They went about <laughs> it in a way. And, and that, look, and there was no Stephen A back then. No, okay? But they went about it in it's a way so that, was, that was just so... It was just so matter of fact. It was so in your face and so obvious that they didn't need to go on a show and talk about it. But you just watched it and you followed it. That's what they need to do. That's leadership to me. That's why Patrick Mahomes but is running circles it? around everybody right now. But who, who's going to teach him? Who in that building? Again, like when I went there, when I was there. Uh, was right, I'm going to end right there. I'm going to say that it's a different era now because, uh, and I think more than anything else, <clears throat> Part of the problem with Micah Parsons, because it's the off season, it's the off season, and Micah Parsons being front and center um, in the media the way he is, you'll start seeing him working out with guys like Wadsworth, and you'll see the workout videos and things, and see the work that he puts in. Um, at this time of the year, and even during the season, you got to understand the NFL is not like what it was when I grew up. Okay, when we used to have um, two a days in a special team practice, and it was six weeks of time where now you've got Tuesdays, it's a day off. You don't have more than three packets days in a row. There's a lot of downtime. Even in the off season with OTAs, you're seeing some teams that, you know, the Eagles don't even do mini camp anymore. So there's a lot more time, and it's a lot easier to be able to do a podcast. You know, I'm sitting here with a mobile studio where I'm able to do a podcast. I could send it to ESPN if they wanted it, and so on. It's not hard. I literally just woke up, rolled out of bed. I'll sit here for 30 minutes, upload it, and I'm done. It's not the end of the world. It is not the thing that they make it out to be. But this is what they do with ESPN. You know, Dak Prescott, oh, here's a turnover. They, they, they've got a new target. they got some fresh meat now. They've got a different subject. They've moved on from Dak Prescott. So, yeah, that's kind of 
<laughs> it's kind of crazy. Anyway, we uh, hope that you guys have a great day. I'm going to get over here and get to work on this bathroom, get this thing done, get this bathtub set and the uh, plumbing fixture put in, and maybe start laying some tile today. And um, as always, I'll see you guys soon. Tomorrow, our Sunday evening, 5 o'clock live stream, we'll be doing it then. And uh, I'll see all of you guys then. In the meantime, have a great day. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire.